hello and welcome to another trip report it has been a long while since i made another video so i'm back this time it's well not really where i meant this channel to be for but it's still on a long distance train i'm right now at the island of Vlieland. from here i will take the ferry and a local train to Leeuwarden and from there on i will show you a tiny bit of the railway station of Leeuwarden and the long distance train between Leeuwarden and the hague that's where i live i will drop her in Amsterdam that's where she lives and um, yeah show you this train this is actually the only long distance trains in the Netherlands I haven't covered yet in my videos and since this channel is about long distance and international train and ferry travel well why not cover this one I hope you enjoy the video give me a thumbs up on YouTube when you like it and of course when you like to see more videos like this subscribe to my channel well without any further ado Let's roll the intro. Just like how I start most videos, a quick comparison on this route when you travel by train, car, and believe it or not, plane is also an option on this route. Obviously, trains won't clean the air, but as you can see, the environmental impact when you're traveling by train is a lot lower than when you're traveling by car, and especially from when you're traveling by plane. Just a quick message in advance. I started a Patreon account to support this channel. Soon I will also launch YouTube memberships, but I will tell you something more about this at the end of the video. For now, let's start with the video. Vlieland is one out of five Dutch inhabited water islands and one out of 22 inhabited water islands in total. In total, you find 37 of these islands, both in and uninhabited. At the south point, they do start in the Netherlands and they go all the way up to Denmark. Have you ever been to one of the islands? And if yes, what is your favorite one island? Just let me know in the comment. This map shows all ferry connections, both domestic and international in the Netherlands. As you can see, the ferries from both Ter Schelling and Vlieland go to Harlingen at the mainland. In Hallingen, you find the ferry terminal right next to a railway station. When you want to go to the German island of Borkum, you also find a railway station directly to the ferry terminal in Eemshaven. I do have a video about this route as well. It will probably pop up somewhere right now on your screen. And otherwise, you'll find a link in the description of this video on YouTube. And for Den Helder, you have to walk a bit from the railway station when you want to go to the ferry terminal to go to Tessel. For the island of Ameland, you'll find a direct bus connection to the railway station of Leeuwarden, what I will show you briefly in this video. And for the island of Schiermonnikoog, you'll find a bus connection to Groningen and Leeuwarden. The vessel you find most on the routes Vlieland, Harlingen and the other way around is the MS Vlieland. This vessel does have a capacity of 950 passengers, about the same as an intercity train. Because the island is very small, you cannot take your car. Instead of that, you'll find one bus line that covers most of the island and will be connected from and to the ferry. The ferry terminal is located right next to the main town. So most places are within walking distance anyway. The ferry terminal at the island is just very small. You find the ticket counter and some lockers. Oversized luggage can be put in these trolleys that you can pick up at the end of the ride again. Well, of course, I will show you a bit of the ferry as well. Most capacity inside can be found at the deck when you enter the ferry. This is also why you have this great panorama view at the back of the ferry. Right next to this, you find this lounge area. And on the opposite part from where you enter the ferry, you find an information desk and a vending machine for some snacks and drinks. A little more to the front of the ferry, you find a dining area where you also find these tables. Over here, you also find lots of power plugs, by the way. And this is also where you find the restaurant. At the moment I recorded this, all restaurants inside were closed. On the opposite part from the restaurant, you'll find the more comfortable chairs. And one deck below, you'll find a cafe inside. Well, this was also closed at the moment I recorded this due to COVID. On the other side of the ferry, 
So at the lower deck on the opposite side of the cafe, you'll find the family area. At the upper decks, you'll find some more places where you can sit. And you'll find another kiosk here where you can buy snacks and drinks. Due to the COVID regulations, this one was able to open. And this was also the only one that was open. Over here, you can also enjoy the sun when the weather is good. For the next 30 seconds, I'll show you some views from the ferry between Vlieland and Harlingen. Obviously, the ferry terminal at Harlingen is way bigger than at the island of Vlieland. Well, I didn't show you that because we went to the train station right away, after I picked up my luggage of course. As you can see, the railway station is right next to the ferry terminal. And this railway station is rather simple. It's just a platform with a vending machine for tickets, an information screen and some place where you can wait inside. So I guess we're done with this station review. Trains on this route are of the type flirt made by Stadler. I won't review the trains for now. For the next 20 seconds or so, I'll show you some views from the train between Hallingen and Leeuwarden. So we're right now at the railway station of Leeuwarden and this railway station is being refurbished big time. This is also what you can hear in the background. On the way to the island, I filmed some shots of the railway station. And right now I will just well we will just take the train to The Hague. Because what's the most beautiful thing of Leeuwarden? Of course, the train to The Hague, because that's where I live. By the way, when you're interested in more trip reports I did, below the description of this video in YouTube, you'll find a link to a map, and on this map you'll find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes, and the station icons do indicate the station reviews. Due to COVID, this is not as exciting as I planned it to be on this channel, but hopefully I can make some more exciting trips soon. At the front of the railway station of Leeuwarden, you'll find the sculpture Love by Jean Plenza, when I pronounce it right. Another thing you find at the front is a giant bus station. This is a very important bus station for regional transport. You also find buses to the ferry terminal of Schiermonaco and Ameland. When you enter the bus station from the railway station, you find the big screen with the information. And on the other part of the railway station, from where you find the bus station, you find a bicycle ground. At the bicycle grass, you also find the OV feeds, the bike sharing program of the Dutch state owned railway company NS. At the front, you also find an exchange office and a restaurant. And this is when you enter the station from the main monumental station hall. Here you find a convenience store and to me this is also the prettiest part of the railway station. Vending machines to buy tickets can be found here but also at other parts of the railway station. And the same thing counts for digital departure screens. As I already told you at the moment of recording the station is being refurbished big time. So I won't give you a proper station review. At this railway station you find trains of both NS and Arriva. And therefore, this is a quite important railway hub. Arriva will have all local trains and some fast services in the north of the country, and NS will have all mainline trains. When you're traveling with the use of an OV chip card, just make sure you check in at the right railway company, and when you change between the railway companies, just make sure you do this at the right way. Probably I'll make a video on train traveling in the Netherlands where I'll explain you more about this soon. The rolling stock that is being used for these routes is called ICM, literally translated Intercity Rolling Stock. These trains have been made by Bombardier and these are the oldest intercity trains in the Netherlands. These are electrical multiple units that do exist of three or four coaches. Before these trains have been modernized, so refurbished, 
you could walk from one train set to the other train set. Therefore, the driver position is pretty high. The transport hubs Groningen and Leeuwarden in the north of the Netherlands do have one train per hour to The Hague Central Station and one train per hour to Rotterdam. These trains do wait for each other at the railway station of Zwolle where you have a cross-platform connection. So basically you'll just find one train every 30 minutes. When you want to go to the Amsterdam Central Station you have a cross-platform change in Almere as well, but this train also calls at Amsterdam South Station, what is the second busiest railway station of Amsterdam. On the numbers 1 and 2 on the outside of the train, you can recognize where the first and the second class is, and on the extra thin blue line, you can also see exactly where the first class is located. Bicycle icons do indicate where you can park bikes. Since I didn't film the exterior of these trains at the railway station, I just show you it this way. Time to show you the interior of these trains. At the front or the back, you'll find some space for bikes. I have to say I found the number of bike places relatively low, only 3 bikes. Normally these trains are combined, so you'll find more space. The second class comes in a 2x2 two two configuration, so 2 seats on both sides of the aisle. Most seats come in a composition like this. You find a small garbage can, a magazine rack and quite a big and steady folder table. There are no special reading lights, but you'll find these lights above the seats. And just below the luggage racks, you'll find coat hangers. All armrests can be put up and down. At some spots you'll find some seats that are facing each other, and I do have to say, the leg space is still pretty good over here. Throughout the train you'll find overhead luggage racks. These are actually the only places for luggage, there are no special luggage compartments between the seats. Between the carriages you'll find some more space, these are mainly folding seats, but you also find this small couch. Some spots of the second class are marked as silent compartment. This is clearly marked at the window of the train. Toilets can be found at several spots in these trains. I do have to say, I found the toilets but also the space between the carriages in general not that clean. At least they don't look clean because of all the graffiti on the walls. However, I think it is cleaner than it looks. And in general my experience is that these toilets do work. Screens at the end of all compartments do indicate route information, travel suggestions and will inform you about construction works. First class comes mainly in an open coast, just like second class, and will be in a 1x2 configuration. So one seat on one side of the aisle and two seats on the other side of the aisle. Most seats come in a composition like this. You find a food rest, a garbage can between the seats and a magazine rack. Although the leg space is pretty good, I do bump into the garbage can in the first class pretty often. So therefore, I think it would be nicer when they put the garbage can somewhere else. As you may expect in first class, all seats can be reclined, although it's not a lot. You can recline the seats by using this handle and all armrests can be put up and down. Some seats do face each other. Power plugs can be found just below the luggage racks, although I don't found this location handy and there are not a lot. Within the first class, you also find two compartments for six people. I really like these, although the leg space is not as much as in the normal open compartment. These are always silence compartments by the way. In these compartments you'll find the power plugs below the seats. A way better place when you ask me. New modern trains do have definitely more power plugs also in second class. But remember, these trains have been refurbished when we didn't all have smartphones. Top speed for these trains is 160 km per hour, although they don't go faster as 140 km per hour in regular service. These trains are relatively old and new trains have been ordered. So therefore, when the new trains will be put in place, these trains will be slowly phased out. At last, Wi-Fi is available in this train and it's for free. Because in the Netherlands we do have net neutrality, so you can't prioritize one website more than another website. The speed is really low. Something I really like as well is in the app of NS, you can also find route information without connecting to the Wi-Fi. Based 
on your GPS. You can see in what train you are and you can find more detailed route information. Of course, you have to give permission for this. Because distances by train in the Netherlands are never really long, because it's a small country, you won't find a dining car in these trains. For the next tiny part of this video, I'll show you some views between Leeuwarden and The Hague. I'm back in The Hague at The Hague Central Station. Um, there's another station that's a little bit closer to me, but this is the final call of the station. Because this is a terminal station, this is actually always the final call of all trains that do stop or start here. Anyway, I really hope you liked this video. When you made it all the way up to now in the video, you might consider subscribing because then you find a lot of other videos like this. I will make another video, as I promised in one of my previous videos, where I'll be featuring the main railway stations of The Hague and also show you how to get around. Because traveling wasn't that much of a thing last summer. Uh, I also did a train-related city tour of The Hague. Um, will pop up somewhere right now in the screen. Anyway, I really hope you like this video. When you do so, give me a thumbs up. And like I said, when you made it up till this point in the video, you may consider to subscribe to my channel. See you on my next video. Okay, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'll talk about Patreon and YouTube's memberships. It feels a little bit begging, but it's not meant to beg. I just want to bring this channel to the next level. First, a really quick resume. I used to work for a travel agency that used to sell travel uh, train tickets all over the world. Um, due to COVID, literally everybody has been fired. So it's now a small family company. Um, so I was one of them. So I lost my job last June in 2020. Got a new job pretty soon after that, but I really don't like. Um, and I found a new job right now that will start on the 1st of June in 2021 at an NGO. Probably tell you a little bit more about this in the next video. But I'm really, I really care about the environment. I really like to travel and I really like trains. So this all together with questions people asked me at the, the, the travel agency where I'm working for um, made me creating these videos and also made me have this format. Um, I do get monetized by YouTube, so I do earn a little bit by advertisements. It's not a lot. But I want to bring this channel to the next level. Um, but I don't want my videos to be exclusive for the ones who pay for it. So I will try to find other ways um, to interact with the people who, well, my patrons and my members on YouTube. Um, 
because I don't want to exclude other people. I mean, everybody is still as much as important and I really like it when you subscribe to the channel, when you like my videos, when you, when you comment my videos. This is all really important to grow the channel. So basically everybody who does this, thank you. I really appreciate this. It, sometimes it just looks like a number, but these are real people, real people who watch my videos. So thank you for that. Um, but I want to bring this to the next level. Patreon is most interesting because they will ask a lower commission. YouTube asks about 30% commission. So I own, well, I get 70% of the amount you pay. When I do this by via Patreon, I will earn a little bit more so I can invest, invest this more into the channel. I also try to explain as much as possible on how I invest this in the channel. I have to be honest because there are still a lot of travel restrictions right now. I can't do that much right now. So there are not that much benefits at this moment. But still your support is very much appreciated. Um, there's a link in the description below. You can have a look on Patreon about what the benefits are. Um, and I probably make another video about this subject soon um, because I don't want this video to take forever. Anyway, I hope you really liked this video. I hope you liked the message. I hope you like my videos in general. When you can't afford to be one of my patrons or to be one of the members on YouTube, no problem. I really like it when you like this video, when you like my other videos, when you watch them, when you comment them, and of course, when you subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I will make another video on this subject soon. That's it for this video. Um, once again, I really hope you like it and see you on my next video.